Hello and thanks for checking out the all new Brew Steam electric beer brewing heating system. It is a brand new system that we've produced. Um, it brought to you by the original makers of the Electro Brewer. Um, it's got some exciting features that we feel is going to be an asset to anybody getting into the beer brewing business, whether it be on a small scale or a large scale or even a high end home brewer. Um, a couple things that we've approached that is a totally new system to the industry, very unique to the industry. Um, steam brewing, uh, using steam jacketing systems for, uh, for your standard commercial brewing system is a, is a normal practice. Um, this is a, an all new way of approaching it. We do not steam jacket. What we're doing is actually injecting the steam directly into the actual mash tun or your brew kettle or your boil kettle um, or even your, your sparge kettle, whatever you choose. It's a modular system. So what that means is this system is actually a standalone system. This, this doesn't brew the beer. What this does is it, it provides the heat for your kettles. So your, your, whatever kettle you decide you want to use, whether you want to use a three tier, a mono block, um, three pots in a row, two pots, whatever kinds of pots and, and systems you are, are currently using or want to use or find in the, in the, uh, out, out in the industry, uh, you can use standard equipment and use our system and what our system does is it enables you to have precise digital temperature control over your beer or over your, your mashing and over your, your boil kettle and sparging um, with precise control and we're not steaming on the outside of the jacket, we're actually steaming on the inside out. Um, I'll show you that first, let's start with the, the injection system. Um, we're using a Venturi system, come on over here and check it out. This is the heart of the system, and what it is is we're using a, a Venturi style nozzles. Uh, you'll notice that they're angled um, in, in a certain way so that it keeps the, the liquid inside the pot rotating at all times. We've also got some additional holes down here, and that keeps the turbulence in the center of the pot as well. So this you simply, this is a high temp uh, temperature hose, which will take up to 700 degrees. You literally just walk up to a pot and set it in it and then turn it on over here. And we're gonna do that and I'll show you. Well first actually I'll show you without the water what, what the steam is actually doing. You'll notice what's happening is it's steaming that way and that way, two different angles along with the, the manifold. You can simply put it in any size pot. It's, a pretty, it's only a 12 inch uh, steam arm or manifold. Um, but we, it makes it very versatile. The hose on it is seven and a half feet, gives you plenty of room to, whether you need to put it from one pot to another. Um, you'll see over here what we've got is control panel. And what this does is it gives us a couple different things. We've got our steam, our actual steam pressure. We've got our water pressure that come in the inlet on the actual, on the actual unit, on the steam brewer. We've got a position one, two, and three switch. So the first switch is just auto filling and turning the unit on. We've got digital temperature controls. The second switch is actually your heat system that turns on the heat. And the third system, the third button, is actually used for turning the steam on and off. What's nice about this system is you have full control. So if I want to, if I want to go to 209.5, um, we're holding within a half a degree. Unlike any electric system, steam has no ability of scorching. You'll have no caramelization of your sugars. Um, extremely gentle. It's the gentlest way of, of actually introducing heat into a pot. And instead of heating from the outside in, like a traditional steam jacket, we're heating from the inside out. Um, and what that does is it gives you a very high, high degree of, of efficiency. We are, we're pushing 98% efficiency. There's almost no loss between the hose and the, and the pot. So your steam is directly affecting the actual liquid in the pot. Um, and again, you can use it for all three of the three year vessels or two year vessels or however you configure your beer, beer brewing system. Um, we've also put on the system a manual override handle and it basically it's a valve to shut off the steam. Um, these are all on quick disconnects including the, the probe, the temperature probe, which you see here. It's on a, in a guitar style jack or a headphone style quarter inch jack. There's our probe on the, on the outside of the pot there. And so that gives us the ability to talk to, very easily talk to the, um, the computer here. And it's just a, it's just a simple plug and play. Um, if I want to use multi multiple um, outputs, uh, meaning if I want to use multiple outputs for my, for my temperature probe or multiple outputs for my steam, this is also on a quick disconnect. Very easy to quick disconnect it, disconnect it. Um, use it for, uh, you can have a variety of these. You have two or three of these in your system. 
Um, the neat thing about this system is again, we're not, we're not trying to sell you an entire beer brewing system. We understand that the rudimentary beer brewing systems out there, there's a lot of great ones, um, brew pots, kettles, you might find a great deal on some used equipment. Um, and having that level of control has never been, never been used before. So we've actually got, we believe we have a really unique special thing that really gives you that level of repeatability for beer brewing. Um, as you'll see, the whole cabinet on this unit is designed out of aircraft aluminum, 100% made in USA. That we believe is a very important thing. 100% USA, we're not, there's no import here. Uh, we're not manufacturing these overseas. These are all built here in the US, all handmade. Uh, 304 stainless uh, side panels. It's a totally enclosed system with venting, uh, aircraft aluminum. It's all modular. This, this whole system comes apart with an Allen key. So it's very, very easy to, to, uh, to take apart if you ever have to maintain it or, or work on it. Um, the, the beautiful part is on the inside, which is it hidden. And you'll see right here, we've got a 304 grade, and this is eighth inch thick plate stainless. So this is very, very heavy duty. Um, of course, polished. Um, we use a uh, TIG welder to weld the whole thing, so the welds are just superb. Um, inside here, we've got a very heavy duty um, 65 amp contactor. We've got our, our, uh, our heavy duty uh, solenoid system, all stainless, that, and that turns your steam on and off. Um, we've got the PID controller, of course, all the wiring is protected. Um, you know, this, this unit is not at all built. Um, with with a uh, short term in, in, in mind. This is a long term uh, use. This this unit is designed to be and designed to be built to be used for, for many many hours and very many days um, without and continued use without breakdown. The uh, the heating element system is a full ten thousand watts. We can go from eight to ten thousand watts. At a ten thousand watts, it's easily a full barrel system. Um, it can maintain a, it can bring up a boil from, from, from ground water temperatures, standard or ground city or city water temperatures, um, up to a full rolling boil in about 63 minutes. So it's very quick, very efficient. Um, a lot of systems where you use gas or, or steam jacketing, you're losing a lot of heat in the air. Our system uh, is we're heating it again from the inside out. Um, the, the neat thing about steam ejection, when done properly, is steam ejection, the loss that you lose um, in the boil off, it is actually very, very close to the to the condensation that we're actually entering or adding to the pot. So, uh, it ends up being fairly equal. Sometimes a little more, but not. It's nothing you can't negotiate. Um, so it's very exciting. It, you don't you don't really have to be a mathematician to figure out your water volumes. Uh, so we're not. One would think though that you would get a bunch of condensation. It really isn't that. That isn't the case. When properly designed, our system here it really is. A, a great um, a great amount of a great deal of research and development. Um, my industry that I came from originally for the last 25 years is building commercial uh, boilers for espresso coffee machines. Um, I also have been building beer burn equipment for many years. Um, so we've taken some of those ideas and these ideas and we've put them together and we've come up with this. This is a patent pending idea. We have uh, we have applied for the patent. Um, we believe it to be probably the best way to, to brew beer, the most efficient. So here's how, here's how we would actually use the system. Right now, why don't you come around this way so you can really see it in, in the full view of what I would be in. We've got a 1, 1 to 1.5 bar of steam pressure. And that's right now, that's just our boiler steam pressure. We've got our target temperature here on the PID controller. We've got our actual temperature here on the PID controller. So if our target temp is 209, all I have to do is I can move it up and down very easily. Set the temperature. Um, this system does have the auto tune, which is very nice. So it automatically has fuzzy logic, and it'll maintain temperatures within a half a degree. And all I simply do is set my my actual steam ring, place it in the pot that I want to heat. Very simple to do. And then I just press the the number three button. What the number three button does is it turns on the solenoid valve, turns on the solenoid valve for the uh, for the steam, so the steam output. Uh, is now controlled by the by the switch and also by the valve. So we'll, the first position would be push number three. Number two would be open the valve. And here you'll see it. it 
typically when you have a boiler system in a brewery system or a brewery um, setting, you've got an incredible amount of state regulation and uh, local and state regulation that are going to require to have like a bomb proof room and, and have people come and inspect your boilers. Um, we've gotten around that. The reason we, how we've gotten around it is we have a, a 30 liter stainless steel boiler. Um, we're only running at 1.5 bar, which is just a little over 20 pounds, 20 psi. We don't follow the regulations as a sta standard uh, steam ejection boiler, or I'm sorry, steam jacketed boiler. Um, so we are really unique. And this, this system, all you need to make this thing work is you need 220 volt power, a minimum of 40 amps, um, 50 amps would be preferred, and a three prong, a three prong uh, 50 amp 220 volt uh, plug. Don't need three phase or anything like that. What also is nice about it is it's got an automatic filling system in it. So it's got an auto fill water fill system. So all I need is some power and water. So I've got a, a connection, I've got a garden hose here connected to it today just to show you. It does have a really neat thing about it that it has a, a, a boiler drain on the bottom of the, of the system. So once a month you should drain the water in the boiler to replenish the water and give you, give you new water. The water gets kind of stagnant in there. So one, once a month is a good idea. Uh, but this is made to be used every day, you know, and we, we, we feel with our level of knowledge building and, and designing commercial coffee machines and boiler systems and also uh, beer brewing equipment, which we've done, uh, we believe that we've built something that is not, doesn't exist. Um, we, build, we believe that it's a, a definitely an important um, asset. I think that most people that brew beer still struggle with the consistency thing and the consistency really comes down to heat and repeatability. So we've now, we believe we've, we've gone after it um, from a different approach. No one else has actually really come up with the steam ejection systems commercially as commercially viable. Our price is very affordable. Um, and again, it works with any system that you are, are currently using or can find out there in the, in the industry. So thanks for checking it out. And uh, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this thing on and let it, let it come up to a boil just to show you what it does when it gets up real hot. Right now our target temp, um, we'll put at 209, I'm at 1500 feet. Um, elevation so my boiling point here is a little different than, than you might be if you're down on a lower level so we're at 140 degrees right now um, and this would be you know cl pretty close to a mashing temp and we're gonna go up to 209 and right now I've got a 25 or 26 gallon pot about half full to give you an idea so let's go ahead and try it and and, uh, and then we'll come back in just one second and I'll show it to you Okay, so it's been, I don't know, about probably 10 minutes, 15 minutes at the most. And uh, right now, what's happening, you, hear, you can hear the computer cycling the steam on and off. It's where you hear the clicking. And what it's doing is it's using the fuzzy logic inside the computer to try and maintain or reach the temperature and not overshoot it or undershoot it. So it's pulsing, actually, is what's actually happening. Uh, we're running that off a solid state relay. And what that does is it gives us a perfect um, level control, an infinite amount of cycles in order to maintain the right temperature. You can come over and see this right now. It's going to get very, very cautious once it gets close to the 209 target temp. Now it's overshoot a little bit. Once we find, once we find the, the perfect temp, the computer will figure out how to maintain that within a half a degree. So you see it's getting there. And then it's overshooting a little bit, and then it undershoots a little bit. And what happens, the computer actually, it learns. It learns how to maintain in that environment. That's why they call it a fuzzy logic. Now if you come over here and look at the, the actual boiling kettle, you'll see what it's doing. So it's pretty exciting because it, it definitely, we now have a level control that no one else has ever had. Um, this system is, is super, super precise. Um, there's absolutely no scorching. Um, it's real easy to connect, real easy to use. Uh, plug and play situation, plug it in the wall, uh, connect it to water, and uh, of course connect your, your steam and your, and your probe, your digital probe to the, your apparatus or your brew pot. You can hear it's starting to stabilize. The clicks become less frequent. Um, and it's, we're, we're, once we maintain, especially the larger, what's interesting about the system is the larger volume of water, the actually more precise it gets, it gets more and more even. Um, when you have smaller vessels like this, it, uh, it fluctuates a little bit. So, but we're at, you know, half a degree to one degree tops. Um, like right now I'm at 210, or 210, 
Now shop a little bit, and now it's going to drop down. You can hear it. And every once in a while, you also hear the autofill happening, automatically filling the boiler. So it was 209, now it's 210. And now it's going to drop down a little bit. There it is, we're hitting right on. Now it's, it's finding it, you can see it fine tuning. What they call is auto tuning, that's what actually technically it's called. Now it's 209, 209.3, 209.6. So as you can see, and also on our, our pressure gauge, because we, we're, we've got a serious amount of, of wattage here, uh, we've got 10,000 watts. So this thing can really out, it can outdo what it actually can do. It can really produce a t tremendous amount of steam without ever running out. Um, what you don't want is a system to get to get uh, low on steam. What happens when you get low on steam is you get a lot of condensation. Thanks for checking us out. We believe the brew steam to be a revolutionary new product that could benefit you and your brewery or your microbrewery or nanobrewery, um, whether using this for a, a, uh, a, a, a test system or a standalone system. We believe we have something that is very unique and very controlled. Uh, you should be able to brew very, very clean beers with this and repeatability. Repeatability is key. Thanks for checking us out and thank you.